back at it friends so we got the secondary clutch off my x3 again and we got the new helix here that we're going to be putting in it uh, so the helix that's currently in there is a 3848 uh, progressive cut helix and the new one that's going in there is a 45 degree straight cut so this is going to kind of change the way that the motor gets loaded and the rate at which the secondary clutch opens and closes it works in conjunction with the secondary spring for that uh, so this one's going to work better for the additional power that we're throwing at it and uh, the type of driving that i do uh, so we're going to get this set up on the vise there we need to use our threaded rod here uh, and this washer and nut to kind of compress this while we take out these three bolts in the back so once those three bolts are out we can start uh, backing off the nut and uh, that'll allow us to pull the helix out you don't just want to pull those three bolts out it's under spring tension things will go flying people will get hurt real bad deal uh, so this is uh, part of a clutch service tool that you can buy for the X3. It's pretty similar to uh, just threaded rod. <laughs> but anyways, I'm going to get that mounted up in the vise and get those bolts out of it. So you don't need a lot of tension on it, just enough where it's snug. Pop this off of here and I've got our favorite Milwaukee Impact right here. I'm just going to back these three bolts out with one, two, three, 13 millimeter. So you can see nothing's coming apart because everything's captured with our threaded rod and these nuts and bolts. So we're going to put this back in the vise. And we'll just back it off with our adjustable wrench here. I'm just going to pop here because there's a little bit of twist on the spring. So once it clears the rollers, Jump a little bit. That's basically it. So let's take a look and see what we have here. If there's any signs of foul play on the rollers. Those are known to wear out on these pretty quickly. My machine has a little over a thousand miles on it. These are doing pretty good actually. So not bad there. Uh, we're gonna reuse the stock secondary spring uh, the rate of that thing works pretty good for most applications, so I'm just going to leave that alone. Uh, I'll grab the new Helix, and we'll work on getting that, setting that in there. So here they are side by side. Uh, the new one on the left and the old one on the right. Um, you know, when you have them side by side, you can pretty easily tell the difference in the angle. A little more apparent than just looking at it when it's installed. Um, so yeah, that one's ready to go in. I took some compressed air and blew everything out in here. Blown a couple belts from doing stupid things. So there was some debris in there from that occurring. So good time to clear everything out. So what's nice about this, this is from Evo. It's their shift tech package. Uh, normally, when you would put in a new helix, uh, you would need to put quite a bit of twist on it to clear the rollers. But being this has this adjustable bearing housing that you can adjust with these uh, Allen head screws, um, so it comes backed out all the way. So you don't really need to put much twist on it to clear the rollers at all. So it's pretty nice. Super easy to install. Let's do that right now. So you want to make sure your secondary spring uh, is engaged in the hole in this cup and then also in the outer sheave of the secondary clutch. There's this little 
tang on the spring that'll go in there. And once it's locked in, we'll be able to rotate the spring. Uh, we're going to be putting this in the number four hole here. So we'll just drop the new helix on and the tang on the outside will get set into that like so. And you can see that there isn't really any twist we're going to need to put on the helix uh, because like I said, with this adjustable bearing housing, it's basically clocked all um, to the one way. Uh, whereas with a non-adjustable helix, um, you know, you'd have to put a lot of twist in it because it would be at like the neutral position on this, um, which is where we'll end up taking this to uh, once we get it put on the machine. So you can dial in your secondary spring tension with this and you can change RPM with it. Um, you know, if you put more secondary uh, spring tension on, it's going to fight the secondary clutch opening, which will give you more RPM and then vice versa. Um, you know, less tension, less RPM. So let's get to installing this. We're going to need to get our washers again and our nut to compress this down. And use the adjustable again. I'm just going to take a bolt and get it started. Not going to put any Loctite on it just yet. All right, as you can see, all the holes are lined up with a helix, so that's good. I'm going to go grab some Loctite, throw it on each one of these, and uh, tighten these down. And then we'll be able to back this off. And then we'll be done. Pretty neat. To no one's surprise, the actual good tube of Loctite is missing. So, found some bunk tube. Good enough. Just put some blue on there. This is something that will probably come off again at some point, so we don't need anything crazy like red. We can go back in the vise with this now. Get it adjustable. There we go. No problem. Clutch stuff is something that's a lot of people just don't want to mess with because it's kind of scary. And it is, but Pretty simple too. All right, so once we get this back on the machine, uh, we will adjust this bearing housing and uh, get it at this zero or neutral position. Um, like I said, that's gonna be, uh, for a starting point, the ideal spot where you want the secondary spring tension. And you can uh, tune from there if desired. It's always worked good for us in that position. So probably just gonna set it there and forget it. Uh, there's more tuning to be done in the primary for this big turbo setup. If you remember, the uh, engagement RPM wasn't where we want it. So it's gonna have launch control or two-step on it. And we're going to need a lot of RPM um, off the hit to get this thing to make boost. Uh, so it leaves good. Um, so yeah, let's throw this secondary clutch back on, adjust this bearing housing, and probably call it a day. All right, so here's the setup we have. Uh, Evo gives you the sheave tool that goes around the belt that will capture the secondary from moving. So when you're attempting to rotate the housing, the whole thing just doesn't spin, so it just pinches in there, makes it nice and tight. Um, we've got the OEM belt tool with this no more tip on there. We just put a little bit of pressure um, on that 
to help collapse the spring a little bit. And then once that's done, I backed out these three screws here just a little bit, just enough so where you can rotate this housing and it's not going to catch on these tabs here. Ooh, bright light. Maybe you can see them. Well, you don't need to back them out super far, but just enough so that cap doesn't catch on. So uh, I've already rotated a little bit. Um, what we're going to do now is rotate it even more. Um, so the current position, um, well, we're pretty close actually. Uh, we just want it to get rest inside this zero spot. So I've already rotated it quite a bit. I mean, we started off way over there and uh, already made its way quite a bit. So just a little bit further to go. Uh, this can be difficult uh, because there's a lot of spring tension and it also likes to spring back. So what we might need to do is uh, use a lot of my hands. And as I'm pushing down on this to get this to go to the right spot, I might need to just tighten up one of those screws once it gets in the right spot. So stand by for that. So the increment isn't real easy to read from this angle. Um, but we're almost to the zero spot, so just needs a little bit more rotation. I'll get my ratchet uh, with the Allen socket on it. That's a six millimeter. Yeah, six millimeter. Just going to put a little bit more twist on it. Uh, looks pretty good. And just reach in here. make sure it's centered too you don't want to uh, tighten it down on one of the teeth you want the cap to rest inside of where those teeth are at uh, so it locks in good I think we have it there you go lined up at the zero spot and like i said you can put more twist on it uh either way more or less twist on it uh, more secondary spring tension will give you higher rpms less will bring your rpms down if you want to try tuning it in um, but this is a good starting spot so appreciate you guys tuning in uh, i know it's kind of weird me not having anyone here to make fun of and just doing work uh, but yeah, this is kind of some of the stuff that happens, well, when we're not making fun of each other. So, thanks for tuning in. Not sure where this video is going to uh, end up. We pay somebody to do that. So, hopefully he figures it out. Have yourself a good night. Appreciate you.